Welcome back into the studio and today I thought I'd bring you in and show you step by step how I did my latest cheetah drawing and take it really in stages so I can show you the underlayer and how I build detail on top and a little bit about how I select my colors as well which I think you'll find really interesting and I also thought I'd bring you in and show you what my studio looks like after I've done a drawing so I'll just flip the camera around and there's the cheetah drawing and there's the mess on the table that most artists don't show you they show you all these pristine studio setups with those fantastic light ends and things you can see I've got my two swordfish sharpeners here the one I keep with a pretty new blade in it so I can get really nice points for the end and then when that one goes blunt I relegate it down to a general sharpener and that kind of if I just want to sharpen something not very sharp at all that's what I would use and you can see it I've got the inside out of that one because it was breaking pencils it's time for that one to go in the bin and then I'll put a new one in there and bring that into the new sharpener and that one will go into there but that's enough of that let's get back to it and I'll show you exactly how I did that cheetah drawing okay so let's take a look at my finished cheetah pastel drawing and as you can see it looks extremely complicated and it is complicated drawing wildlife animals in general is never ever going to be easy no matter what anybody tells you if you want it to look real and that's what I'm after achieving for myself and in my lessons also I'm not going to spend too much time going through all the details if you want to look at exactly how I did it that's on my patreon channel here I want to give you just an overview so you can grasp the way I teach and the concepts behind it so as I said straight away it looks really complicated and that brings me to the first problem people have what colors do I pick how do I know which pencils or pan pastels or anything to, to even start so let's take a look at that first now when you really really zoom in this is my finished drawing so if it was the reference photo you can imagine there'd be even more detail and colors on there when you zoom right in you see what the beginner and novices problem really is which color do you pick for the underlayer everything is so detailed where do you even start now many of them reach for these color picking programs I don't use those much at all well I don't use them at, at all myself I do a form of it but it's in a different way because if you use color picking programs they're just going to look at each individual pixel usually and every tiny movement to any side will create a different color and that makes you even more confused that's why I don't do that I try and either I do one of a couple of things Either I look at the photo and I blur my eyes because I'm more experienced, I can then see the general color, or I blur the photo and print it out. But let me show you the reason I do that. Now granted, I've extremely blurred the image this time, but I want to make a point. This is kind of what the underlayer should look like. The details have gone and the general color and the general tone, that's the tonal value light and dark they still are there it still looks like a cheetah's eye even as blurred as this and this will make you think of perhaps a paint by numbers type of drawing or painting now I don't want my finished artwork to look like paint by numbers I want it to look realistic and detailed but I use then that kind of paint by numbers look where the details are gone and you're just looking at the general color tonal value that's my base layer now when you look at these images side by side I think it becomes really apparent the detailed image on the left the blurred out image on the right how that blurred image is that general color and tonal value the super darks have gone in the fur and the real lights have pretty much gone as well it simplifies it and that's what I'm all about simplifying the process taking complicated subjects and doing them step by steps so let's take a look and I'll show you exactly how I did it in those steps now step one the beginning of it all transferring my reference photo over onto the pastel matte paper and the pastel matte paper is critically 
mid-tone it makes it even easier because as you can see I've got lights showing up on here and I've got my dark spots and the outlines showing up on there as well if I was using a white paper or black paper the blacks wouldn't show up or the whites wouldn't show up so for this subject and 99% of my other ones a mid-tone paper I like this brown I also like light blue they're my two favorites and I've got a great tip for you if you're doing an animal with spots or stripes if you go over the spots with black gouache then when it dries the markings won't go anywhere and this is especially helpful if you're using pan pastels as you'll see in the next stage and you can also do the whites as well if you want the critical thing is pastels go on top of it once it's dry so it works just perfectly now the next part is the underlayer and that's where lots of people go wrong and if you're wrong on the underlayer it's like doing the foot ends of your building if that's all wrong then the top is just going to pretty much fall to pieces so we've got to get that stability that really solid looking underlayer in this case I've used pan pastels you could heat just as easy as I show in lots of my lessons use pastel pencils or pastel sticks but as I said this one was pan pastels and as you can see remember when I showed you that blurred out eye section this is what I'm going for on this stage I'm just trying to get the general color the general tones don't be too far out with your darks or your lights just after a general tonal value okay so it's supposed to at this stage look pretty much like a paint by numbers drawing or painting so what comes next the darker texture because I didn't go too dark on my underlayer I went for that mid-tone now I put in the darker texture and you can clearly see that on that left hand side I'm just putting in the marks in the actual uh, direction that I'm seeing the fur growth think of this as the darker areas in between the light highlights okay and you can see from the right hand side to the left how that texture that dark texture has been built up on top of the dark texture or kind of in between it comes the lighter texture and I think showing you in these stills can be more helpful sometimes than actually seeing the video everything is easier to understand when we ha don't have lots of moving parts but you can see on the right hand side I'm starting to put the dark texture there and on the left hand side you can see the highlights have gone on top that's creating now that more three-dimensional realistic appearance now in this photo you can see on that right hand side as we're looking at the screen I've now put the highlight section on that forehead so let's see the process again on a new section I had my underlayer in with pan pastels and then I've put the darker areas that darker texture on top now here you can see that I've gone even darker on top and when you watch my longer videos you'll see that very often there's multiple layers in this process fur especially cheetah type of fur or tigers they've got lots and lots of layers we need to build layers into our artwork to create that with pastel matte paper we get the op opportunity as long as we don't put thick heavy pastel layers down we can build many many layers on top and then all that's left to do is to gradually go lighter so that usually takes two layers where I've gone a little bit lighter than the under layer and then highlights on top and that really completes the process of creating that texture let's have a little recap so once again this is my finished drawing okay it's full of all those details but for the underlayer what do we want more of a paint by numbers appearance for the underlayer I want to forget completely about the details or the brightest highlights or even the darkest darks they need to be there but subdue them don't put down your brightest highlights yet okay think of it as a general tone paint by numbers just like you're seeing in the reference photo and then you build those layers on top of dark texture first and then gradually go in lighter with your lightest texture and highlights last of all 
I hope you found that video of use and picked up a few tips along the way from that step-by-step -step process. And please, in the comments below, let me know what type of videos you'd like to see. I'm doing these to try to help you out and show you my studio as well. So if you've got any video ideas, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do.